Welcome to the Prescription for Living in Houston podcast, where we go over exactly what it's like to work, eat, sleep, and play right here in Houston. Let's talk about the uh, pros and cons. And so, give you a little, give you a little chance to think about those. So, um, pros. If you if you could kind of name off three to five pros, what would you say? Um, community the friends and really just the life we've we've built in in Siena yeah. you know I, I mean it's hard to describe we don't have to do the um, in one word or less like so community so what what would you say about the pro about community is I just feel like I there's so many people I can call you know in in, in a second to hey can I borrow this um, Hey, does anybody have any recommendations for this? I can call any of these friends if I needed help, right? One day, I think both you and mom were gone and I texted a few people, hey, can you take my kids home um, or make sure they're okay? So I do, you know, and then if we're out of town, people are watching our house, right? If um, Hina had to take me, my neighbor, my lovely neighbors, Hina had to take me in the middle of the night to the ER, right, when I had an emergency. Um, so I used to travel, I, think, I used to be out of town um, yeah. five, six days a week for, you know, every every single week. So I was gone a lot. Um, Mom would be on her travels or whatever. And then just recently, and so I still travel about once a month because we're, we're building homes up in Oklahoma and flipping properties up in Oklahoma. So I still travel a little bit to be able to kind of keep pushing that along and forward. So, so... You know, obviously Susan works long hours at times. She's got call and various things. So to be able to rely on people, sometimes we've got to get Abigail to a, an additional softball practice, um, or we've got to get Daniel to to whatever it is, right? The, I think one of the, the events with the engineering thing. So um, just to be able to have, to be able to reach out to neighbors that are all in the community that are likely doing similar things, right? So. A lot of the girls in the neighborhood are playing softball. A lot of the boys are playing baseball, whatever it is. So we can ask them to be able to, to take them or again, look after them after school. If I'm running late and you're still at work to be able to kind of have them head over to somebody's house so that we can get home, you know, and uh, get them in the house. So, yeah, I mean, it's also, I mean, it's just little things. Like for example, I'm part of this, I'm part of a lot of different groups in the neighborhood, but there's a buy nothing group that people just, when they're decluttering, they just give away stuff. So, you know, when people are like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for all this furniture and clothes, right? Like people share things, um, people share ideas, they give each other recommendations. It's so easy to find. I think I found every single person from plumber to electrician to, um, you know, anybody, carpet cleaner, have all been through our neighborhood site, all of them. And so I think I, I just love that I could really pick up the phone. I remember one of our, you know, our water heater burst and you weren't home and we got Aaron's husband, Levi, to come out and help us. I mean, literally people will come if you need help. So and I just love that we have that that community. Yeah, yeah during the freeze, there was a lot of people just sharing extra, Helping each other. Um, yeah, you know, irrigation parts and, and various things. I mean, even the hurricane. Remember, Dan, you helped a, a friend of yours in down the street with demolishing their, you know, to demo their house after the flood. Um, yeah. So we got community friendship. What was the other one that you said? I mean, I think just the life we live. I mean, like okay. how, what other backyard can we build this amazing backyard, right? And we just literally finished at the end of March and what we've had so many parties already. We've had you know, crawfish boil where we had 120 people. We had um, a softball baseball party. We've had, you know, end of the school year party. We're gonna, I'm about to plan another, you know, I love party planning. Um, we're about to have a big double digit birthday bash in August. So I don't think we could have had this amazing backyard with this river, you know, with this lake view yeah, you know, I think I was talking to somebody else, and, and essentially, you know, we could have we could have lived closer to the hospital, right, to, to ease that commute. But 
again, you're gonna you're gonna pay for that convenience. Versus out here, you're getting um, a large square foot home. You're getting a bigger lot uh, in a lot of cases to be able to put in a pool, to be able to put in an outdoor kitchen, still have your kids have some room to be able to play and practice, whatever it is. So I think, yeah, the, the value for money, you know, being out there. And then just kind of tying in what you originally said was having the convenience to the Fort Bend Tollway, or if you're going over to Sugarland to be able to go down six or to be able to snake down university to be able to get over there. You've got a lot of options for commute to be able to get to these various places. Um, so those are absolutely the pros of being here in Siena. And then even if you've got it, if you're travel, so again, I traveled uh, and I used to go to the airport. Again, I used to go early. So, you know, being able to get to IAH was, was an hour, but again, you were, you were, it was early in the morning. And then hobbies, super simple. We've, we've flown out of hobby a lot recently to be able to go to Mexico or various places. So that's super convenient to be able to get over there. If you if your if your commutes to the airport, so um, how about the, we can't not stop we can't not talk about Big Abby. So we found Big Abby through our neighborhood site, and she was our part time nanny for four years. We thought we say and Big because, Abby only because our daughter is named Abby, and we didn't <laughs> want to get them confused. So Abby was tiny. Our daughter was tiny at the time, and uh, yeah, we call her Big Abby because very she's tall, the bigger Abby girl. like um, adult. Yeah. yeah. So, so Big Abby helped us with all the commute, but it's easy even now, you know, lots of moms are asking about um, babysitters and mommy's helpers and, you know, people who drive kids to all their... Um, she heard activities. her name, so she had to come say hi. Yeah. Love you. Love you. So she was a, you know, key to having, you know, all the... Be they, she took them to, I think, every swim practice and dance practice and karate for a long time. Until I, until I left. So, okay, so cons, because because I know you have some cons. Are you? You're, they're not so much cons anymore, right? I mean, there's still some cons. <laughs> Go ahead and talk about the cons. So, I mean, definitely still I pass by my old house every day on the way home, and I'd be like, man, I could be home right now. At eight minutes um, you're young and single but i have learned as i said now circling back to the beginning of our conversation sir learn to embrace the commute so i you know found really amazing podcasts from true crime you know to uh developmental podcasts to i do amazon uh, or audible books i do phone calls a lot I catch up with people during my commute. So I talk to Susan a lot and uh, catch up with people that I haven't talked to. And then sometimes I just listen to the radio and music and just decompress before or after work. Because as you know, my job as an ob -gen is pretty intense. So it's actually nice to have that kind of half hour just to decompress and prepare for my day or prepare to get back to the craziness at home. Um, yep. so I have learned to embrace that commute yep. and it's not that bad. So commute would be con number one. Number two would be. I wish there was more of a restaurant scene here, but I think that would also bring, um, a lot more traffic, <laughs> but, um, I do wish there was a little bit more kind of, you know, entertainment sometimes, but. We, it's not too far away, you know what I mean, to go to Sugarland or Pearland. That's the, the other unique thing about Siena is like we live kind of in the middle of a lot of things, right? Yeah. It really takes about 30 minutes to get anywhere, yeah. <laughs> except for the woodlands. Um, but like to Pearland, to Sugarland, even when we're going to go to Alvin, you know what I mean, for softball tournaments. Um, it really, I feel like it's like, it be, it's becoming like the middle of Houston has moved, right? To not, it's no more downtown is the middle, yeah. right? So yeah, we're able to shoot over to the like Sugarland Town Center or the Pearland Town Center. Those both have just tons of options for restaurants yeah. um, that are, they're very, very good, right? They're not the Heights, um, you know, or Montrose. Even Galleria. I mean, it really doesn't take that long to get to Galleria, right? We found some shortcuts to go through the Galleria pretty quickly. 
So that, I mean, that's kind of a con, but I mean, it's not really, I mean, it's not like within five minutes, but it's within 20, 30 minutes, right? I think, um, I think if you're in the back, a little farther back, um, I think it's, you know, that adds some time, but being where we are up towards the front or even the middle, I think it's, um, that, that. Yeah. And if you, if you speak to probably somebody who lives in the, um, you know, um, the back of Siena, might be a little then it's going to be a little bit tough. And right now we have a lot of construction happening and road closures. So, which I think in the long run, it'll be better because they're building like a third lane, a turning lane. That's going to help. They're widening all the, the main wait. arteries coming on in here. And then they're, they're adding the, the tollway extension too. So we kind of, back and that fourth end tollway is going to be, you know, really nice. Any other cons to kind of round this out? No. I think. Oh, go ahead. there are a lot more critters. <laughs> <laughs> they're not too bad though, but there are definitely more uh, possums and raccoons out there. And you may see a gator here or there. You just leave them alone. But that's the thing is there's a lot of actually like wild, you know, like birds you can see and like there's kids love it though, you know. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more than the city, right? Yeah. So, okay. Um, let's just talk about the market update real quick. We've seen a lot of growth here in Siena. Um, compared to when we first moved in, how would you say the growth here in Siena has been? I mean, we were one of the newer parts of Bees Creek, right? where they grew, that was already the first, I think one of the first, but I, I, I remember talking to somebody, one of another anesthesiologist, he was one of the first 20 homes in Siena. Yeah. And he said, it's been, he still lives here by the way, but he said, it's been crazy how much growth yeah. is in Siena um, and the development, right? And so you definitely have all the older homes, but the newer homes, all different kind of budgets and um, sizes of lots. I think probably the, the newer lots right now are smaller, but still pretty big compared to the city, right? Yeah, um, yeah I think Stan has got a, lot of a, a whole bunch of different neighborhoods at a bunch of different price points. Uh, right now, if you just kind of look on the MLS, the average home in Siena is about 700,000. But again, you've got a, a vast spectrum of houses that kind of cover from, you know, that that there's a new development's going to open up in the high 300s and then you've got homes up into the you know high millions um, not high millions but high you know uh, close to two million um so you've got a, a vast you've got a vast spectrum there's a private neighborhood where they they go even kind of higher than that right next to us so you can definitely find a lot of different price points in siena but again it is getting um there's a lot of building going on especially as they've expanded it in the back so so market, and that's what's drawing in all of the extra restaurants, uh, grocery stores, all of the different um, conveniences that we have with regard to specs, academy. We've got a lifetime fitness coming in here now that's massive. I think there's, a, there's an LA fitness, right, that, that went in right by the academy. So there is just a... And all, all the other little boutique, you know, like not only at 45, but Orange Theory, they've got uh, nine rounds. So. If it's, you know, if that's not your thing to have a big gym, you could have these boutique, oh, you know, all the Pilates or, you know, club Pilates. And, and then you've got the, so the big movie theater going over on the on the corner by the, the tollway in six. So you got the movie theater, you've got additional restaurants. So from a market perspective, the growth here, um, home values, uh, just overall number of homes is, is just increasing a ton. So... Thank you so much for taking the time and talking about Sienna with us. Thank you for joining us on the Prescription for Living in Houston podcast. We've had a wonderful time discussing what it's like to work, eat, sleep, and play right here in the heart of Texas. If you're considering a move to Houston or within Houston, we're here to guide and assist you. Don't hesitate to reach out with a call or an email at dan at dhsrealtygroup.com. And remember, the charm of Houston lies in its diverse neighborhoods. So make sure to tune in next week where we'll be exploring another vibrant neighborhood in Houston, offering insights into its unique lifestyle and opportunities. Until then, stay safe and keep envisioning your perfect Houston living experience. 
Goodbye for now, and we'll catch you in our next episode.